Guess I'm gonna have to get rid of my electric vehicle. Future Rich, what are you doing here? I'm here to make sure you don't do anything stupid. Now what's all this about? I'm gonna have to get rid of my i3. Is it because of the terrible range? No. Is it because of the really skinny tires? No. Is it about the space-time distortion when you hit 96 miles an no, hour? No, not that either. Wait, what? Never mind, I guess that hasn't happened yet. Wait, you said something about time travel. No, let's focus. Why is it you need to get rid of the i3? Everyone's switching over to the North American charging standard, which means 1772 plugs and CCS are going to go away and I won't be able to charge my vehicle. Yeah, that's not the case at all. Oh. Well, I guess we're going to have to talk about that right now. Sound the alarm. I'm coming, I'm coming up. We'll have the ball. I'm sweet. The J1772 plug and CCS plug have been around for a good number of years. And they're going to continue to be around for quite a few years more. But there is a reason why some people might think their days are numbered. A few weeks ago, I had done a video, I'll put the link up here, and I'm going to leave it up here for a while because I'm going to refer to it a few times. In this video, I described how this left GM at a disadvantage compared to Ford for not having that charging network, and sooner or later they were going to find themselves having to adopt the NAC standard as well. Well, I was absolutely right that they were going to do it. I just had no clue how soon, because not 12 days later, they announced that they're going to be adopting the standard as well. Hi, Elon. Thanks for joining. Absolutely. Um, welcome to, to Tour of Spaces. It's great to have you. And um, I think everyone's really excited to hear the announcement. We plan to adopt the North American charging standard. And uh, we're working really hard that our first vehicle will come in 2025. To me, what's even more exciting is that our existing EV customers can leverage uh, the 12,000 Tesla fast chargers early next spring with an adapter. So I couldn't be more excited about what this is going to do for customers and for EV adoption. That's, uh, that's great. Um, and uh, I obviously want to emphasize that you, you have our, our full support. Since starting this video, Rivian has also announced a similar transition plan. Also, both ChargePoint and Electrify America have acknowledged the NACS as the standard. There are also 16 states that are in various stages of passing laws to require each charging site to have a uh, NACS connector at it. So this transition is happening really fast. By the time I'm done with this video, there'll be dozens of other companies that have jumped on board. Um, including one major factor is the Society of Automobile Engineers, also known as SAE, uh, is now working on setting up a actual NACS standard because uh, the last S in NACS is supposed to be standard, but really what it is right now is a proprietary connector being distributed by Tesla. Um, so within Tesla, it's standardized, but when you start fishing it out to other auto automobile manufacturers and other charging manufacturers, there isn't really a standard for how they're going to operate the system. This is where the SAE will come into play and NACS will officially be the North American charging standard. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button down below. While you're down there, hitting the subscribe button would greatly support the channel. And of course, don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And stand by to the end of the video to hear my new subscriber shoutouts. And that's just here in the United States. As I mentioned in my video before, the European and uh, Asian manufacturers have no real stake in this game, right? They have to make a different connector currently for the U.S. than they do for their markets already. So which connector it is doesn't really mean much to them. Even that said, Volvo and Polestar have already announced that they'll be shifting over to the NACS and uh, Mercedes-Benz has announced that they are seriously looking at making that transition as well. UH. Check the news. <laughs> huh, that's kind of weird. Mother I'm never going to get this video done. Son of a and in recent news, Mercedes-Benz has also adopted the NAC standard. <sighs> By the time this video comes out, chances are pretty much all of Europe will have already shifted over.
There is one major holdout, though. The U.S. government is still very much attached to the NACS and still wants to see it at every location. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do with that. Uh, they can't really, I suppose, the funding that they're allowing people can be dictated by that, but they can do the bare minimum to achieve that funding. And honestly, it, once the majority of the vehicles shift over to that, it'll be an archaic requirement and it'll probably fall off the books anyway. Add to it the fact that since they never really set a standard before now, it's a little hard to retroactively go back and go, hey, I know everyone's adopting this standard, but we want it this way. It's not going to go well for them. I think they're going to buy themselves a one-way trip ticket to Lawsuit City. Where does that leave everyone that has a CCS connector here in the United States? Well, for folks who re recently purchased GM vehicles and Ford vehicles, they're promising adapters for them. For everyone else, you can buy an adapter, I suppose, when they become available on the market. But it doesn't mean you don't still have access to the CCS network. The reality of it is that there is still going to be a great many CCS connectors. They will obviously over time phase out, but that may not be as quick as you might think. Uh, the factors that are going to contribute to that is the types of charging stations. I'm going to lump the types of chargers into basically three categories. Three connector, two connector, and one connector. Three connector charging stations, which are a lot of Electrify America and EVgo stations, already have all three connectors available. So this is a zero cost transition. It's already set up that way. You just keep doing what you're doing. For two uh, connector stations, they can either replace them with three connector stations, but this will be costly, or they can see what I've already seen at a lot of charging locations. The uh, Caltrans has their own charging stations for free at various locations through the state. And like the one I went to had two charging stations. Well, one had a CCS and a Tesla. The other one had a CCS and Chatamo. So this already meets the needs and requirements, right? Eventually down the road, they'll probably swap that CCS f on the Chatamo station to a, um, to a Tesla connector. So you have a Tesla and CCS and a Tesla and Chatamo. This will work just fine. And I think that that's going to cover the majority of places. What if you have a site with only one charger and it's a two connector? Well, currently, chances are the connectors are going to be CCS and Chatamo. Well, one of the, uh, you either have to replace that with a three plug station or one of those plugs is going to have to change over to uh, NACS. This is who I think is going to be the biggest uh, casualty of this transition will probably be Chatamo. Realistically, it's already the bottom rung. The only vehicles primarily in the United States that have this, are the Nissan Leafs. And they are probably the, since they are both the oldest, longest standing uh, brand, and the ones with the worst battery thermal management system, they're probably going to start seeing fewer and fewer numbers of them before a whole lot of other vehicles. So the need for the Chatmo is going to decrease, and as they need to free up connectors, those are probably going to be the ones that suffer the most. Now, of course, the last category, this is where CCS is going to take a real hit, right? Is you, have, you have a variety of single connector uh, sites. A really good example of this is Volta. They have one plug, and right now it's CCS. That's clearly going to end up changing eventually. How fast it changes in each location is a matter of time uh, and demand. But eventually, I think you are going to see some of the uh, DC fast charging CCS sites start shifting over to NACS. Of course, this whole concern about what kind of connector you have kind of goes out the window with the adapters. As you can tell, I already have a NACS to 1772 adapter uh, that I purchased already. Uh, this, of course, is only for level two. And I got this because one of the places I find myself parking uh, for longer periods of time has a couple J1772 plugs, but they're often completely full and there's a couple of frequently broken and they have a whole group of Tesla destination chargers and there's usually uh, one of those empty and available and they're more often working. So it was to my benefit to buy an adapter. So if you start seeing yourself having an issue with availability for uh, charging or if you just want to be able to have access to the Tesla network and they haven't installed an, uh, a magic dock in your area to be able to connect to the superchargers, buying an adapter would probably be very much worth your time, especially since 
I'm going to guess uh, they're going to start becoming pretty fairly affordable. I'm going to guess the ones that Ford and GM are going to be giving their uh, their uh, buyers, you know, if their vehicle gets totaled or something, they may throw that thing on eBay for a relatively cheap price. So long before you start getting into a position where you don't have chargers available, there will probably be a plethora of adapters available to make this pretty simple and easy anyway. Now let's talk about the unsung victim of all of this, the 1772 plug. Because the reality of it is that the core of every CCS system is a 70, 1772 plug connected with the DC fast charger connector to make it combined charging system, which is the CCS. All right. You see, this is probably the site that's going to see the greatest uh, decrease. First off, level two uh, 1772 plugs are pretty ubiquitous. They're all over the place. So changing some over to NACS would be pretty handy. It wouldn't hurt the, the availability that much, but it is going to happen. Again, I'll use uh, Volta as a great example. At the mall by us, we have the single uh, CCS connector, which someday will change to NACS. And then there are 10 level two charging stations that use the 1772. So I guarantee that in very short order, some proportion of those 10 are going to start shifting over to NACS, right? As this becomes more ubiquitous, it's going to need to use the level two chargers for when you're going to the mall. These, these two hour time limit chargers at the mall to drive people towards them is a great marketing system. And it's a great idea. Not so great if the cars, that, the majority of the cars that can use them don't have them available. So you're going to see this trans transition over to uh, and ACS for the plugs. I'm going to guess you're going to see this as a proportional thing. So it's out of the 10 at our location, you're probably going to see three or four become an ACS. And then probably each year or every other year, you're going to see them tack one more from, uh, from 1772 over to NACS, making them effectively destination chargers. So what do you think of the future of U.S. charging? Do you agree with what's in this video or do you disagree? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. Also, do you think I missed anything? Go ahead and throw that in the comments as well. And now it's time for the subscriber shout outs. I've had so many subscribers since my last video and I can't thank y'all enough. It means the world to me. There are so many though that I can't get them all in one video, so I'm going to break it up into pieces. I'm also going to do my best to pronounce everyone's name correctly, but if I screw it up, I apologize. Alcock Lake. Octavio Peguero. Erica Bebe John Brooks David Studhalter Carl Wett The Ninjineer Rocker09 Greg Demasi Brent Yi Stephen Dunn Steve Henney Kent Trogdon FGXW8 John W. Dowell Zachary Keith Thomas L E Russwig Mark Vanya Thanks again to my subscribers and I'll get the rest of you on the next video.